Well, hi everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Jay Hobson presented by Bank Corp South. Well, the Golden Eagles coming back off the road. A tough trip out to Denton, Texas against the mean green of North Texas, but back home this week at the Rock as the Golden Eagles take on the Roadrunners of UTSA. And Hop, let's talk just a little bit about the game out at uh, North Texas. Pretty even uh, football game, and they, they were able to make a few plays there late in the third quarter and kind of pull away. Yeah, we, um, we had our chances, too. It's a frustrating game. I, I, I felt like, you know, it was a 10-7 game at half, and we had moved the ball in the first half. We just didn't score, you know, and that was kind of our big point. We got to score, but but we had moved the ball, and in, in defense, a little bit of offense, we had had some minus yardage situations, but they had moved the ball. We'd gotten into their plus side of the field, the 35 or 40, and it just seems like we stalled almost every possession we got there. And uh, again, it was a close battle, third quarter. I think coming in at halftime, we came back out, drove the field again, missed the field goal, then got the ball back, drove the field again to the eight, and then we had a turnover. And, uh, you know, give their little quarterback credit, Mason Fine. He, he's, a, he's a nightmare to defend, and he eventually kind of sprung free and uh, found a receiver. And, and, uh, and we had a few missed assignments on the back end that, that, that certainly one was the, the touchdown in the, first, in the early second quarter, and then we had a big third down, 11 conversions, but but uh, you know you know he's going to make plays. Their quarterback's going to make a player here or there. But again, it was a you know for four quarters it was a hard fought game. Three quarters a hard fought game. I didn't think uh, certainly our our fourth quarter was uh, our best quarter of the season. But I think defensively we probably tried to press and make some things happen. And, and uh, offensively again, I felt like in the fourth quarter we we threw the ball well, we moved the ball, but we just you know we got into that. 35 yard line range and it just seemed to stall out again, John. Yeah, a couple of guys I thought they really played well. Jordan Mitchell's a guy, has a good story, yeah. a guy who yeah. has battled injuries throughout mm -hmm. his career, but finally healthy and got a chance to play. Comes up with 12 catches in the ball game. Yeah, he did. Jordan played well. You know, I thought, uh, again, uh, Quez had a few big plays. I thought we threw the ball well. Uh, we missed some opportunities on some, some runs. Travinsky had a decent day running, but you know, that's something we need more input there. And uh, we had uh, opportunities uh, to have some big plays in the running game, and we have to take advantage of that. And uh, that's something that I think that's critical for us for the rest of the season. And, and same thing on defense. I know you were talking about this after the ball game. A lot of opportunities maybe to get a sack on Mason Fine and really kind of change yeah. the momentum around a little yeah. bit. But he's so elusive, he just makes that little move and was yeah. able to get away. And yeah. he had a tough time getting yeah. him on the ground. Ball bounces up into his hands. We had a couple of snacks. <laughs> Seems like he picks it up, yeah. scrambles around, and then the side arms one downfield and hits the receiver right in stride. You know, it seems like he's got a knack for that and, and give the young man credit. Uh, you know, he can ad lib and make plays happen, you know. And uh, again, I felt like, again, we were doing well. We felt, I felt like we were, we were moving the ball every possession. We were playing well defensively and uh, just, again, some, some miscues and some mishaps in the late third quarter. And I think once they got the 16 to 7 lead, they, they, they had put two quick drives together and uh, that was ball game. But again, our kids played hard. I'm proud of that always. But uh, we got to find a way to sustain those drives, um, execute in those coverages, and, and uh, give ourselves a chance to win. I know you said after the game, one of the turning points, we had it, uh, must, that must have been the second quarter, had it third down and one and tried a couple of times to convert. Yeah, we got to convert that. I mean, there, there's, no, there's no excuse to that. We have to convert it. And, and uh, again, I almost called a t t timeout and a challenge on the spot. But I did. I knew it. Would, I felt like the spot because it was a, it was a full yard. I thought it was really close to a first down. But I didn't want to burn the challenge because if it's not exactly a first right. down, you don't get the you don't get the spot and you burn the challenge. So I didn't think it was worth burning the challenge. But again, whether it's, when it's third and one or fourth and one, I'm old school. We got to find a way to get that yard. Right, we're going to talk a little bit later in the show about the Roadrunners of UTSA. But coming up, we've got a, a couple of features. One is on. Patrick Stewart, who's uh, yep. been the equipment guy here at, for about, I guess, almost 21 or 22 years at Southern Miss. And one of the things he talks yeah. about is, is you guys are wearing this year a sticker on your helmet to uh, remember our good right. buddy O.B. OB Bowen. Right. And, and Pat, is uh, he's becoming an institution here, as you are, John. And, and uh, Pat is a guy that, again, he works uh, tire tirelessly 
and is always uh, doing everything he can to, to give our program an advantage. He's a guy that, again, takes care of all of our athletic programs. He's a guy that uh, is an extremely hard worker. He's a guy that's black and gold through and through, dedicated to Southern Miss, loves our institution. And, and Pat's a guy that, uh, uh, again, OB, like you said, is a guy that's dear to our heart. And Pat's a guy that he came to me with the sticker. And uh, we certainly, I certainly thought that was a great idea. And uh, we've been blessed to put that on the helmet because OB blessed us with, with his life and what he meant to our football program. And uh, again, Pat is that guy that uh, he's kind of a, a mainstay too for our former players. He and Todd have been around here for a while, but Pat's even been here longer than Todd. And uh, he's kind of a go-between. A lot of the old guys come back, get in touch with Pat, and, and uh, they know they're always welcome at Southern Miss and always at Golden Eagle practices. So it's uh, Pat again. He, he's an institution and just uh, appreciate all the work he does. Well, one of our features this week on Patrick Stewart. Got a couple other features for you as well. We'll be back with uh, Coach Hop in just a bit and talk about the Roadrunners of UTSA here on Southern Miss Sports Today. One thing we did this year differently, uh, of course, with OB passing last year uh, around Christmas, we wanted to honor OB with a sticker. And uh, the best thing we could come up with was the fact of, you know, he always blew the horn at practice. Uh, and, you know, OB, hold your ears. You know, that was his famous saying. Uh, and then the other one's a pretty neat sticker with Mike Slive, you know, the, the first, the, uh, the commissioner of the inaugural Conference USA and, and what he achieved and all that. Uh, really good man. He was very, uh, talkative, would do anything he could for you. Uh, you know, you can't say enough good things about Mike over the years. Cocktail time. Cocktail time. OB was a very unique person. Uh, he, uh, you know, he his sayings, you know, when he could imitate coaches, he could, you know, he'd get a smile out of your face. Some of his famous sayings, you know, cocktail time. Uh, you know, uh, he, would, he would say, blow it up. You know, hold your ears. Uh, all right, toe. You know, I mean, it's just, and the thing is, is we talk about here in the equipment room, we talk about seeing, you know, the fact that those come out in us now, and we say them and don't even think twice. Oh, 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 One thing that we've been talking about with some of the older guys, as a matter of fact, is putting OB's name in the stadium uh, along the Ring of Honor, because, you know, when you come back, everybody has an OB story, whether it's, whether it's current, in the past, however it may be. And I think, you know, you come back with your kids, especially those ones from the 70s and 80s now, and they look up in the stadium and they say, OB, well, let me tell you this story about him. You know, and I think it's just a, a something that needs to be done and, uh, and taken care of at this university. You know, I, I take an immense pride in our helmets. I take an immense pride in our uniforms. Um, you know, being able to pick up the phone and call Adidas and order anything we need. Um, I like to see, I mean, I tell all our students, you know, whether you're here, you know, four years, five years, six years, get the degree. You know, because the degree is what you're here for. Um, I like talking to the players about, you know, something along the lines of, you know, we have players that have kids, you know, and I'll ask them about their kids or if their their mother may have cancer or battled something. You know, I, I don't I don't care about the playing field. I want to know how they're doing personally, and uh, and I ask them about that. You know, and I like to pick with them. You know, I mean, they all call me old man because I've been here so long. They, you know, they claim I've been here since 1909 when the university started, uh, but. But you know, my, my point is, is there's so much more to people. And I think Coach Barry put it well when he was talking about the five second rule. It only takes five seconds to ask somebody how they're doing. And I think that's important because there's so much focus on the field of them, you know, to succeed and to, you know, run the play the right way to execute all that, that some things, sometimes some things get lost. I don't know so much is, is, is what it means to wear the black and gold as much as it is you know, getting on game day, putting, you know, 100 to 150 people out there dressed, ready to go and taking care of their needs, uh, being behind the scenes with it. You know, I mean, it, it's all about, you know, it, it's, it's about a pride, pride thing with everybody. Um, you know, this equipment room, when we leave at night, making sure it's straightened up, you know, nothing's messy, you know, making sure the locker room's taken care of. Uh, I have spent the greater part of my life here. I met my wife here at the university. 
Uh, you know, and, and, and it's, a, uh, it's a wonderful place. I've seen ups and downs. I mean, we went 12 and two one year and turn around and go 0 and 12 the next year. I never thought I'd see that in my lifetime here. Uh, but you know, we're back on the right roll now. Coach Hobson has a great message to preach to everybody. Uh, you look at the baseballs, the basketballs, the softballs. I mean, we had some great success this week in golf. You know, and that's where, you know, I get, I get my pride is, is where it, making sure we know we're good. from Alito, Texas. It was, growing up, it was a real small town. There wasn't very much, but uh, everybody played football. If you didn't play football, then nobody knew who you were. Like we had, I think, I started playing football in the fifth grade and we had five Pee Wee teams for the fifth grade. So everybody was playing football. You know, I just started playing football and I always played soccer growing up. I always loved kicking the ball. I wasn't the most athletic, was a little bit of a late bloomer, you could say. So I was smaller on the field and uh, just really, enjoyed kicking the football and it was something I was good at and just playing football in Texas and at Alito there was always competition and uh, I honestly didn't start kicking until on varsity until uh, I started kicking off my junior year and then uh, took over everything except for extra points my senior year. I, I had two extra points my entire high school career on the varsity football team. Practicing as a kicker is completely different than as like a wide receiver or something. A lot of it's on your own. You have your kicking coach, which I, I have back home in Texas that I've worked with since my sophomore year of high school, who's really helped me become the kicker I am today. But a lot of it's on your own. You go out pretty much all year round by yourself. You got your bag of balls, you go kick. I'd go kicking a lot with my fiance and she'd help me shag and just kind of be there. So I'm not out there on the field all by myself alone. But yeah, a lot of it's on your own, just by yourself. I don't know if there's a guy that I try to mimic my kicking style, but I definitely, growing up in Texas, watching the University of Texas, I watched Justin Tucker, who's now the most accurate kicker in NFL history, and then uh, also Dan Bailey, who's kicked for the Cowboys for a long time, that ended up just getting cut by them. But those were, those were the two guys that I really liked to watch kick and really enjoyed watching them play the game. There's so much advice that I've gotten through kicking from Corey being here before me. He was just a, a great kicker, really great guy. And then the kicking coaches I've encountered and Coach Waz and all the coaches that I've encountered through here. But just, if you miss a kick, just move on from it. You know you're a better kicker than that. Just like my first year here, I didn't start out too hot, and but I knew I was a good kicker. I was here for a reason and you just gotta put the bad times behind you and move on because you know there's always better times ahead. At practice, we're only out there for about the first two or three periods, and we get our special teams done with with the team, and then we head over to the game field, and uh, we come out there, and we we have like stuff we work with each day, like we kind of like Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, we have our things we go through, and uh, we work. Some days we'll work more field goals, and just like working on our repetition and our uh, flow of things with the snap and the hold and the kick, or we'll work with uh, punts, the directional punting, or just working on specialty kicks for like surprise onsides and stuff like that over there on the game field. I got my uh, bachelor degree in construction engineering technology. It's real similar to like construction management or construction science where if football never works out, which it may not, uh, I'll go into like a general contractor and be like a project manager or superintendent on a construction site. But uh, right now, I'm just in online classes, being able to play football, so really focusing on football. I'd love to kick at the next level if I was able to, but there's so many things that go into it, and it's an extremely challenging job, but I'm, I'm going to give it my best shot, and just, just we'll see where it takes me. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are.
uh, the thing about this year's basketball team is you've got five guys that are seniors and then you've got a couple of guys that are uh, sophomore and juniors but then you've got a big class as freshmen so it's been a, a fun group of guys to work with because you've got one group that's a lot further along and they're helping the, the young guys come along so uh, the energy's been great uh, you know the, the freshman group is, is by far the most talented group that I've had so you know they make some exciting plays uh, they just don't make enough of them right now but uh, they're going to be a fun group to help this uh, senior class go out with a, a good basketball team. It's been a good spring, it's been a good summer. Our basketball team uh, you know had a big win uh, obviously in the tournament. Uh, the win that everybody talks about is the Middle Tennessee game but also you know the Florida International game where we only won by one and uh, it got down to you know 20 seconds against uh, uh, Marshall and if you win that basketball game then you've had a great season and a chance to play to go to postseason so uh, we're really looking forward to, to next uh, the next time we play which is going to be a few weeks uh, but at the same time uh, you know we understand that we've got a lot of work still to do we're going to play, uh, you know, we're going to play fast. Uh, we finally got enough depth uh, to be able to maybe play some full court defense, uh, pick up uh, a little bit further up the court. And also, you know, we're always going to be a team that wants to get an easy basket whenever we can. Most important thing is not to give up any transition baskets, but at the same time, try to get as many as we can. So we'll, we'll, we'll push the ball when we, when we have that opportunity. You know, this season we uh, we tried to build our, our non-conference season up because probably for the most part uh, this league right now is a one-bid league and so I want to give uh, our team the best opportunity and the best competition uh, to be ready for conference and then be ready for the, the conference tournament. I thought last year that's what we did. I made it even a little bit tougher this year and hopefully that it'll pay off in March. You know, this league is uh, is going to be very, very uh, balanced in my opinion. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, Western Kentucky and Marshall that, that probably is going to be picked one or two, whichever way it is, but then you're going to have seven or eight teams that, in my opinion, doesn't even really matter where they're at. Uh, the bottom of the league has gotten much better, so uh, over a 14-team uh, league, uh, the, team, uh, the team that you know, obviously plays the best on those four teams going to have a chance, but there's seven or eight teams I think that could come out of this thing with a with a championship. The thing about uh, Reed Green, uh, you know, I've been in this one it's full, and uh, so there's nothing that's going to 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 do anything more than than our fans. But at the same time, I think we're bringing some things to it. Uh, you know, we got the video boards now that. Uh, you know that the fans like to see we got a you know a new cosmetic look that when you walk into the to the coliseum it's not as you're walking into a dirty place anymore it actually looks clean so the administration is doing everything they can to help us and uh, i think the improvements that they've made when people walk in are going to be really happy Basically, and I think that this is a way we operate as sport administrators, you're, you're there to help out that program and make sure that, that they're finding their way around uh, in, in, in making sure you're not a hindrance but, but an asset to the program. You're, you're there administratively to make sure the work's getting done, the things that, that have to get done. You're there uh, just kind of as, as, a, as, a, as an opinion to bounce ideas off of. You're there uh, as a as a, a person to, to kind of pat people on the back and, and tell people that, that we're, we're behind them and, and just be sure that you're, 
you're supportive in any way possible. And I think that's what separates a, a good administrator is that you're, you're helpful. You're making sure that, that uh, the ball keeps rolling downhill instead of a hindrance, instead of someone who, who comes up with roadblocks. We, we have to be in the business when you're, when you're a sport administrator of, of finding solutions and not pointing out problems. I, I love being a, really living in a, in a college setting. Being here, being able to, to make a difference in a student athlete's life uh, during a very, I would say, a formative time in their life, that 18 to 22, 23 year old range. Being a part of that, I think, is really special and what separates the college. And what, it's what, I, what I love about being here on a college campus is that we have that opportunity to make a difference in, in people's lives. And not only that, but it's also the opportunity to, for, to find ways to connect alumni with, with, their, with their alma mater, connect fans with the school, and be that be a, a, a conduit of a positive force not for, for everything that's involved here. I'd love to have the opportunity to be an athletic director someday. That's always been the goal. Uh, it's a weird business and it can take in some different different paths. But that's always been the goal with me. I'd love to be able to to, to have to have the opportunity to shape an athletic department and give the opportunity for student athletes to grow and give the opportunity for, our, for a coach to support and mentor a coaching staff and have them achieve their dreams as well. John is, is outstanding in the fact that you know, you have the, the authority to make decisions as long as we're doing things inside of our mission and our guiding principles. If we're operating inside of our Michigan, our guiding principles, John gives us a lot of latitude in making a difference in, uh, in, the, in the lives of our student athletes and our coaching staffs. It, it means a lot to me to be, to wear the black and gold here. It, it's, it's different because we have, when you're here at Southern Miss, we're not the most resource group. We're not the most, um, we, don't, we aren't given all the advantages. To me, Southern Miss is, is making the most out of what you have. And, and so many teams have embodied that over the, la over the last 30 years. You take a look at Coach Bauer's teams, you take a look at Coach Palmer's teams, Coach uh, Barry and his squads. They've always made the most with what they've had. And that's why I have such a great amount of pride here at Southern Miss because that's exactly what we do from administrative side as well. And we try to embody that as much as possible. You're not always gonna be the most resourced or you're not gonna always be, uh, have, have everything behind you, but we're gonna do the best with, the absolute best with what we have here at Southern Miss. Well, the Golden Eagles back home at the Rock this weekend. It's homecoming for the Golden Eagles. They'll take on the Roadrunners of UTSA. And Hop, number one, it's good to be back home and uh, another tough opponent you talk about each week, yeah, uh, Frank Wilson's ball club. And, uh, you know, they've had some ups and downs, but a lot of talent on that Roadrunner ball club. It always is. Always a hard fight. Uh, we know it's Conference USA play. And, uh, even at last week in our game against North Texas, the score probably doesn't indicate it, but that was a pretty hard fought game for, for three, three and a half, four quarters, or three and a half quarters. So we know this is another outstanding football team coming to town. It's a big game, as all conference games are, and, and uh, we're certainly glad to be at home back in the Rock. And uh, we've got to have our A game on Saturday. They had a uh, game against Louisiana Tech this past weekend, and uh, Louisiana Tech playing pretty good football. But uh, you know, it's you can't even gauge scores from week one to the other in this league because you really just because you lose one week means you can't come back the next week. You and can't win because one. a game there's so many. I mean, you take our game last week. You're down inside the eight. You get nothing. We had a missed field goal. We get back to the inside the 36 or 35 two or three times and don't score. I mean, I mean. The games, each game goes a different way, so the scores really don't matter. Uh, we just know, uh, again, we got a good football team. We got to put it all together, and that's what we're, we're searching to, to be great on all three phases, offense, defense, special teams, 
And uh, you know, that's what I want to see Saturday. I want to see us come out and execute in all three, three phases. And if we do that, hey, we're going to have a really good football team. You were talking earlier about uh, players coming back and connecting with Patrick Stewart. Homecoming's a time that we probably see more of the former players come right. back from, from all eras of Southern Miss football. Right. So always a lot of fun to – I know you guys are busy. Right. It's hard for right. you to visit with right. them. But it's neat to have them come back it and is. be a part it, of it. it. It's great to, to see the old guys. Matter of fact, we – Last week, uh, Caleb Hendricks came by the hotel. So, you know, it's, it's good to see former players and guys that meant so much to our program built this program. So, uh, again, we, we, love, we love seeing those guys and homecoming is a special time for alumni, friends, family. Of course, as you mentioned, in, in our realm, it's all work, and uh, we know we have a tough opponent in UTSA, and we've got to prepare ourselves. All right, well, Hop, we appreciate it. Looking forward to the weekend at the uh, the Rock with homecoming coming up. So uh, let's go get one this weekend. Appreciate it, Cox. All right, Coach Jay Hopson of the Golden Eagles, a homecoming matchup with the Roadrunners of UTSA here at the Rock. Need to see you there. Want to see you there on Saturday as the Golden Eagles and UTSA will square off in a conference USA matchup. Don't forget, Mondays at at noon, we are at Georgia Blue in Hattiesburg, the Golden Eagle Hotline with Coach Hobson. Come on by and visit with us, and we'll talk a little Golden Eagle football. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time with another inside look into Golden Eagle football. I am more than just your local pharmacist. We eat at the same restaurants, and we give back to our community. At Rogers Family Pharmacy, we are dedicated to keeping you and your family happy and healthy. Download the Health Mart app to your mobile device and easily enter your refills, pill reminders, and so much more. Rogers Family Pharmacy, where we treat you like family. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. The hey, Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement, one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success. From the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts, to the talent it cultivates in the classroom, we share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.